Good town. Welcome to another commentary. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We are today taking it back to 2019, and we are in Tokyo, Japan, for a fascinating, fascinating eight truck event. I didn't even know that they did a show here. The name of this stadium is the MetLife Dome. That's awesome. I'm ready to go. I mean, we've got three competitions. We've got eight trucks. Very solid field of trucks. We've got Morgan Kane and Grave Digger, Lindsey Reed and Scooby-Doo, Neil Elliott and Max D, Mark McDonald and El Toro Loco, Alex Blackwell and Megalodon, Taka Higashino in Monster Energy, Mario Sour and Zombie, and Haley Gawley and Wonder Woman. So let's keep, let's get the show on the road. The, the person who recorded this video did not record racing at all, so we're just jumping right in with the two-wheel skills competition. So we'll go there now. First competitor in this competition is Morgan Kane in Grave Digger. He tries a stoppy. Fails a stoppy. Now this track is the track that they use at a lot of those international events with smaller stadiums. You look at the size of this stadium. This stadium's massive, but we're only using the middle of it, kind of like what they do in Miami, Florida at Marlins Park. Not Marlins Park anymore, but similar to that, where they don't really have the full floor to work with, so it's a bit of a smaller track, and Morgan Kane going for a sky wheelie after the failed first attempt. Very good walking of the wheelie across the ramp. And that will be his move in the books. Two moves in the books, I should say, because that is the end of his run. Unless they get three, which I highly doubt. But I don't hear an announcer, so maybe his run is over. He's kind of having trouble getting himself centered up here. I, uh, maybe they get three moves. I am, I'm not sure what's happening. I'm really not. Maybe he... This is very weird. What is happening right now? This is a... <laughs> this is an odd start to the two-wheel skills competition. Is it? So what... What was that? Why did we... Alright, well, I'm sorry that I wasted all of your time with the second half of that run. Here's Takahiga Shino and Monster Energy. I'm going to give that a... I'm, gonna, I'm the judge for these competitions, in case you didn't know personally. Very good sky wheelie from Taka. I will give Morgan Kane a 6.4. Let's see what Taka Higashino does here. Taka was one of the up and coming stars in the independent circuit. Always drove Monster Energy. Those are his two moves. I will give that a 7 for Monster Energy. Definitely a solid run, but could have been a little bit better. Who's coming out next? Oh, Lindsay Reed and Scooby-Doo. I was like, wait a minute, I thought it was Haley Golly. No, Haley Golly's in Wonder Woman. Haley Golly did drive Scooby-Doo domestically, but she drove Wonder Woman internationally. Lindsay Reed in 2019, this is after she had won the Freestyle Championship, so she is officially a Freestyle Champion at the point of this event. Lindsay Reed now, four years later, retired, no, five years later, retired from Monster Jam. We don't have many weeks left in the, in the year, by the way, to get all these commentaries in. This is the first weekend of December that you guys are seeing these. We don't have much time left. Coming down to the end of the year, getting close to first quarter, which I'm always very excited about. Got a little over a month ago. First quarter, I believe, is starting a little later this year. Good sky wheelie from Scooby-Doo. Oh, she lost an ear. The ear fell off. Still has one left. This is before they started using balloon ears. Those of you might not know, the Scooby-Doo ears are not made out of fiberglass anymore like they were in 2019 when this video took place. They're actually made out of balloons. They're just blow-ups. They're inflatable. Uh, which is, They're not balloons, but they're inflatables, which is really funny. So that's the end of the run for Scooby-Doo. That was not much impressive at all. I will give that a 6.5. Did not impress me. Is she going to go for another move? Maybe she does get three. Maybe they get three. I... All right. Well, maybe we missed the first move from Takahigashino. Because she is most definitely lining up for a third move here. That's a solid, solid reverse popper. She's parked it. That truck is parked on the back two wheels. Very good out of Lindsay Reed in the Scooby-Doo truck. So I'll have to boost her score up a little bit to a 7.7 .7 for that run all around. Good work. Left some room for the rest of the competitors to do a little bit better. Here's Haley Gawley in Wonder Woman. And it's actually really funny that I'm seeing Haley Gawley in this video today because I forgot that she existed 
until I watched a bit of my commentary marathon last week and saw Haley Gawley driving Scooby-Doo. And I remember when Haley Gawley got into the sport, I thought that she was going to actually be really good one day. I thought she'd be one of the top female drivers in all the Monster Jam, and she just never came back after children like a lot of drummers. So that was an interesting jump. She had a couple bright spots throughout her very, very brief career. She would love to get some big air in freestyle, never really did much in anything else, but she would occasionally get those huge leaps in the freestyle competition. She definitely had promise, I just think she needed a little bit more training and never really had the time to get trained. Two pretty boring moves in the book so far, let's see if she can crank out a good one for number three. And try and take down Scooby-Doo for the number one spot. The other reason why I'm not telling you what the scores are in the actual competition is simply because there were two events that took place in Tokyo this weekend, and I have no idea which of the two it is, because the, the title of the video is totally in Japanese. So that was not a great run from Wonder Woman. I will give her a 6.3 for that. Low effort. Didn't really do very much. Would have liked to see some more. Here's Bari Musaur and Zombie, and Bari always one of the men who is competing in all those international events. I would like to do some more international events in 2025. 2024 was a bit of an establishing year for me. Great sky wheelie from Zombie. That's how you start off your run. And now you've got two moves left to really work. You could put in some good work in those last two moves. Really make sure that you get a high score here. No one's really done three great moves. Bari with a decent second one, not as good as the first. We see a lot of sky wheelies here today. Not a lot of drivers are trying those stoppies. But you can kind of see the dirt might be a little bit too overwatered. I don't know if maybe it rained before the event or what, but it definitely looks a little bit wet out there. So it seems like the drivers are playing a bit of a safe approach. Is Barney trying to bicycle? He did, and it failed miserably. So because of that, I don't know what to do. I mean, the first two moves are pretty good, but where's he going? I was going to say, he's done. I I can't give that the lead. I've got to go with a 7.3. I mean, it was a good start, but poor finish. Here's Alex Blackwell, Megalodon. Alex has been on the channel a lot lately with my Captain's Curse crash video and then the top 10 greatest crashes or wildest crashes of all time. I don't even remember what I used for an adjective there in racing history at the World Finals. So it's cool to see Alex driving Megalodon. Obviously... Alex did not drive Captain's Curse his entire career. He was a Megalodon driver at the end of it. A lot of people also forget that he drove Wolverine in the midst of that weird time of Marvel trolls. But the Megalodon was where he found himself at the end of his career last couple of years. Did pretty well. He was on a couple stadium tours. The problem is, though, a lot of my commentaries that I've done with Alex Blackwell have been him in Megalodon because his Captain's Curse days were over before I started with That's a good wheelie. He just walked the back two wheels right up the ramp. That was really smooth. So we saw Barry Musauer do two very good hits to, well, one really good hit to start a decent second one, but then failed that third and cost him some serious points. Let's see if Alex can finish all three moves very well. That wasn't a very good second move, though. So he's going to need a solid third one here. No one really standing out in my eyes in this competition. Does go for the backside of the racing lane. All right, I like it, but I mean, Lindsey Reed did that reverse popper, and it was nice. I'm gonna have to give that a 7.4, or just a point below what Lindsey Reed did. I like Lindsey Reed's run just a little bit better. We've still got two more trucks to go. Mark McDonald in El Toro Loco will come out next. I wonder why they put Grave Digger out first. Such a weird. Well, if it's in reverse order of racing, which it probably would have been, even though it was still in Japan, they would still follow the same rules. That would explain that. What was he? tried a bicycle. I wasn't even prepared for him to do that. Mark McDonald's not a bicycle man. He's a, I always label him one of the kings of the wheelies. So to see him try a bicycle for move number one. But if you're going to try a bicycle, a risky move like that, you might as well do it on your first. Because if you fail, then you know what you have to do in your next two moves. Because then this way you at least have a bit of a a bit of breathing room to do something better, but he did not on the second move either. I, I am one who I believe three moves would be a lot better for the Great Clips, two, for the just the two-wheel competition in general at the stadium level, and I, I know I always talk about how much I dislike skills, but I feel like if you did three moves, it would just do a lot better, because 
they would be really risky on the first one, and then they could kind of do some different stuff on the next two. Try to pop her. That ended up being our worst run of the day in this competition. I'm going to go with a really low two for that run. And he's just going to back it all the way up to his parking spot. That's really funny. Here's Max D. This is Neil Elliott, and he's your last competitor. Lindsey Reed still in the top spot for me with a 7.5. And I really don't know if anyone will be able to take... Well, if anyone could take that down, it's Neil Elliott. No one's been able to so far. He's awaiting the green light. There he has it. You look underneath that MetLife sign above El Toro Loco. That's where your red and green lights are. Obviously, there's one on the other side of the track. That's how Neil knows when it's time to go. He has a replaced back left wheel already, so maybe he had some issues in racing. I don't know. Lining up for that racing lane, Neil very good, but he's also in a rear engine truck. We'll see how that'll help him or hurt him. Well, he did a little popper. I give him props for attempting that move, but he didn't really do it successfully. Well, it's cool that he tried it. Oh, he's going to go right back to the racing lane with a sky wheelie. I like that. So he's kind of on par with what Lindsey Reed has done, but he's going to need a better third move because Lindsey Reed did that reverse popper that was the best move we've seen of the day. So I want to see Neil really seal the deal. And it looks like he's going to try that popper off the backside of the racing lane. If he nails it, he'll easily take the lead. But if he fails it, well, maybe not. Oh, I think he's it. Ah, he's trying to get a good kind of, maybe a run-up for a sky wheelie. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, he wants to try that popper, but he wanted to make sure he had a nice run-up for those back wheels. I like the approach. Will it work? Nope, not quite, so that's going to hurt him. I'll give him a 6.9 for that run. Give Lindsey Reed the, the winner in this competition. I mean, I don't think anyone can argue that, so. Let's move on to freestyle. Nobody wants to see FMX. If you want to, though, you can watch the original video. I'll have the, uh, the person, the video credits down there. So you can, if you want to see FMX, go ahead. I love these guys. Probably know some of them very well. Jared LaRue is probably there, but we're here to see Monster Trucks. All right, everyone, it's time for freestyle. Alex Blackwell's going to start us off with a great move. They really bunched up all the dirt over there on that racing lane and made it a very steep ramp. He got himself a nice little wheelie. Now, normally in international events, you'll see him do something a little bit different, maybe change up the amount of time that they have. You'll see 90-second freestyles. That's, in fact, exactly what we got. You look at that video board. Only gets 90 seconds to freestyle, so it kind of makes it a little bit more difficult. You've got to really go out there and give it your best shot in those 90 seconds. But I will say, sometimes those 90 second freestyles lead to better runs because the drivers are driving pretty hard the entirety of the run instead of kind of taking it easy. And I know some people might hate me for this, but I actually would not be entirely opposed to 90 second freestyles in Monster Jam at the stadium level all around. No, I, I do not like the fact that they would be shortening the events in freestyle. But let's be honest, how many drivers are actually trying in those first 30 seconds? The first 30 seconds is the time to feel out the track. If you did a 90 second freestyle, you see guys going a little bit harder earlier, just like Alex Blackwell is here. You're going to get that action a little bit quicker. It's going to keep the engagement of the fans because the drivers are going to be driving harder. It's just the way drivers have been conditioned today. The judges own. They don't drive hard in the first 30 seconds, especially because of that rule that if you don't complete 30, 30 seconds, you don't get a score. And if you don't complete 60, you lose a whole point. But if you do a 90-second freestyle, you keep that first 30-second rule. But then that minute is just going to be awesome. I feel like it would really increase the quality of freestyle that we would be getting. This is a solid freestyle to start the day. Megalodon doing a good job showing these fans of Tokyo what you need to do in a freestyle run. I'll give them a 7.1 for it. Decent showing. Here comes Haley Gawley and Wonder Woman. Scooby-Doo is parked right in front of her. How is she... Okay, apparently it's not as close as I thought. I was going to say, how is she going to get out? Let's see how Haley Gawley does. I mentioned in her skills rule, she likes to get big air. Haley Gawley is wanting to get some big jumps in there. Definitely some steep ramps. We'll see if she tries to get some huge air in this run. Could you imagine being at this stadium and sitting all the way out there? You can barely see anything. This is uh, probably a baseball stadium, if I had to guess, but I don't know. Just based on the way it looks, it's probably a baseball stadium. Yeah, it is. I can see the foul pole. Look out there in left field. There's nobody out there, and the people that are, they are really far away. That 
that's not the point. Haley Dollar's got a pretty good pace going. And again, like I said, when you only get 90 seconds, you got to get that pace going right away. So you have a little bit more pressure on yourself to find it faster. And Haley Golly has found it pretty quick. She's found that pace, she's found her momentum, and it's off to a really good start. Did lose a little bit there, though, by flipping around that way. That's going to slow her down a smidge. But she adapts very nicely. Gonna correct her pace. Oh, God! She just smacked the heck out of Monster Energy. Completely not aware of where she was on the track at that point. That might end her freestyle altogether. I mean, she smoked that truck. That would be a shame, because she was off to a good start and would have probably taken the lead. Well, no, they've refired her. This is before the day and age where they would completely end your runs for that. I don't know. We'll see. She got refired, but she shut back down again. Maybe something wrong with the truck. Nope, the light is red, so her run is over. Or not. Nope, they... Okay, they turned it back on. I, I don't know what's going on. Japan. But she comes right out with some big air afterwards, and that's what you have to do. So many times we see when trucks get shut off that it really kills their momentum. And Haley had some really good momentum going. And with 30 seconds left, she's going to have to keep that up. Because I really do feel like she can put up a solid number here. I don't anticipate her doing a backflip, so she's going to need to get all these points by just filling the 90 seconds with a good run. She's doing just that. This has been a good freestyle. Let's see her get one big jump, though. She has gotten a couple of nice leaps, but I talked about her big air. I want to see her go huge on one move. She is lining up for that jump. Nice air. I would like to see her do that off the racing lane, though. That would have been a little bit cooler. Her time is up. The rest is just for the fans here in Tokyo, Japan. And that was a good freestyle. I will grant her a 7.7 .7 for that. That was a good run. Generous 7.7. .7. Oh, man. Looks like Monster Energy is going to be broken after how hard Haley Golly hit it. Either that or they're just replacing. No, they're pulling him to the back. So, too bad. And that's the kind of thing that happens if you hit a truck that hard. You can really break it, and it looks like Haley... I mean, she smoked that truck, and it looks like she did break it pretty bad. So Monster Energy is unfortunately going to have to be taken to the pits. And probably going to be the end of the night. I guess we're not going to see a Takahigashino freestyle here today, which is too bad because I would really like to see what he can do. We're also wasting a lot of time showing this, so I'm not going to waste your time anymore. Resuming freestyle, here's Barry Musawa and Zombie. Nice air right off the bat. These tracks, because they're so small, kind of remind me of like Tacoma or Fargo a little bit, but you do have the option. It's some really nice freestyles in there. There's room for big air. There's just enough space to do what you need to do. I really do like these kind of small, hybrid kind of tracks. They work really well, and they designed them well. You've got that backflip right in the middle. Someone will probably hit that tonight at some point. See, we're on, we only have a minute left of the freestyle run, and 30 seconds in, Barry's already driving a little bit harder. And I just, I don't know, like I said, I, I'm, I'm all for two-minute freestyles, but the way drivers drive today, nobody's going hard in those first 30 seconds. They're just not. They take it way too easy. If you cut it down to 90, people would be driving a lot harder. But And the problem is fans wouldn't like it, and it would really cause a lot of uproar in the community when they first found that out. They would never think about the positives that would come from a 90-second freestyle in a judge's zone day and age. If you have judge's zone, you've got to do a 90-second freestyle. You get rid of judge's zone, let them do two minutes all they want. I don't care. But those first 30 seconds always end up being pretty, pretty disappointing. Barry's down to his last 30 seconds here already. He's actually down to his last 15. Not going for the backflip yet, so I don't think he's going to. He's having a very solid run. It's very compact, but like I said, that's you've got to squeeze all that stuff from a two-minute freestyle into a 90-second freestyle. He's done right there. I will give him the lead for that at a 7.75 by a half of a point. I just feel like it was... I don't know. I feel like that was better than what Haley Gawley did, and a lot of that probably has to do with Wonder Woman being shut down in the middle of the run, just kind of killed the pace a little bit. Here's Mark McDonald, El Toro Loco. Mark had a very disappointing skills run, so I'd like to see him do a good job in freestyle. He blows the smoke to the fans to let him know he's here. Go to the left field side, yes. Right there in the shortstop position, probably. Kind of hard to judge where he is on the baseball diamond from here, but 
Off of the nice jump. Again, 90 seconds, you gotta make the most of your time. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a backflip in this run. It's a fourth freestyler, so it would make the most sense, unless they didn't do that back in time. Mark was always a bit of a middle-of-the-road freestyler. He never was above and beyond, never was qualified as one of the greatest freestylers. He was always more of a racer. Ooh, he's gonna cross-thread that backflip ramp. It's very steep, but he did it well. Gotta be careful doing that only 30 seconds into your run, but he tried it. That's a little bit of pizzazz, so I'm always here for a little pizzazz in a freestyle run. Good move, too. Just kind of twisted it into the ramp. Kind of Lupe Souza-esque there for Mark McDonald. I'll never forget the day that Mark McDonald overtook the El Toro Loco truck from Lupe Souza. Everyone, no one ever thought Lupe would drive a truck aside from El Toro Loco. And I mean, I really love Mark McDonald in the safe auto minimizer truck, but once he jumped into El Toro Loco, he made it his own and drove this thing for a very long time. One of the longest tenured El Toro Loco drivers in the sport. I think a lot of people probably forget how long Mark McDonald drove this truck because it just felt like, I mean, he drove the black body for a while. I don't know, he never had the success that I would have liked to see him have. He's having a good run, but I don't know if he'll be able to take the lead. The truck's overheating a little bit. That's what all that steam is coming out of the back end of it. I'll give it a 7.6. I wasn't very impressed, and I wouldn't give that the top spot, to be totally honest with you. I feel like he could have done a little bit better there. You've got, I mean, maybe a backflip would have been nice. So his run is over. A lot of steam pouring out the top of that truck. He's getting out of the truck. So we're halfway through the competition here. Monster Energy, like I said, probably not going to be freestyling. So we more than likely only have three trucks left to go. Scooby-Doo is the first of those three. Got myself another idea for a video. I have so many ideas. I mean, there's probably, there's over 50 ideas. Oh, I paused the video. There's over, that's what happens when your keyboard's right in front of your hands. I have over 50 ideas in this list, and if you could do the math, if I'm only doing one a week, well, it's going to take a whole year to get through them, and that's if I did them every week, so. It's going to be a while till we get through all these ideas, but I'm, I, I would much rather never run out of ideas and never do all of them than to not have enough. But I did have the idea of ranking El Toro Loco drivers, and I realized I could do that for pretty much every truck out there. Which would be pretty cool. Be like, oh, let's rank Scooby-Doo drivers. I really could. I, I could do that. I think that would be fun. Nice air! The first driver to hit that big racing lane hard. We saw Alex Blackwell kind of walk it up and over. Lindsey Reed went committed for it. Lindsey Reed was arguably one of the most entertaining freestylers internationally in 2018 and 19. She had a lot of crazy moves in these two years. She became a staple in the international driving world. Is that pretty much every one of these events? She's got driving pretty hard. Oh no! <laughs> Over she goes. Well, that ramp was a little too steep for her and she hit it a little too fast. And that ended her run a little too early. I'll give her a 7.4 overall. And if I had to guess, they're going to show her flipping over, which we don't need to see, so let's skip ahead. Well, don't mind if I do. Takahigashino's coming out for freestyle. I'm excited to see this. Nice air. Takahigashino was a very sneaky, pretty good freestyler. He was a native of Japan as well, so it was always cool to see him out here in these Japanese events fans I'm sure are loving the fact that they're getting to see him. You couldn't just kind of cut out the only Japanese driver. That was, it was so frustrating seeing Haley Gawley hit that truck. I wanted to see Taka run, so I'm glad that we are. Very nice to see. He's getting some pretty good air. That's the only issue with the international events from back in the day is that there were so many decent drivers in the international circuit who never got a chance to showcase themselves in the United States. So, so many Monster Jam fans, first off, don't even know who these drivers are. Is he going for the backflip? Heck yeah, Takahigashino! Oh, whoa! That did not work. That backflip ramp was not built very well. You can see on the video board how it's not even... Like, it's supposed to go like this, 
it's like this. So that's not even a backflip ramp. That's just a ramp. I will give him the lead for that at a 7.85. Because, heck yeah, that was cool. Well, I've cut out about three minutes of recoveries in the last two freestyle runs as Gravedigger's out with a big jump. Morgan Kane behind the wheel today. Morgan got a lot of these international driving shows as well in that two-year span where the international events were really, really prominent. 2018 and 19 is when the international stuff really took off. Matter of fact, the 2020 World Finals is supposed to have an international driver in it. They were going to pick one of the international drivers to drive in the World Finals. I don't know if they announced it or not, but I think it was supposed to be Peter Nyman. At least that was what people were saying it was supposed to be at the time. I don't really remember. I'm not using any insider knowledge. I just remember people talking about that at the time. But that's just how big the international shows were at this time. Morgan having a solid run. I like the pace he's carrying here. He's just throwing the truck around, not really worrying about hitting anything straight. Which on a track like this, how muddy it is, sometimes it's better that way. A good pace will carry you a long way. He's just foot to the floor. Oh my. Full speed ahead. Making that truck work. Oh, he cross threads the backflip ramp and almost lands a backflip better than the ramp itself. Well, that's one hell of a finish. I'll give him the lead for that at a 7.9. I, I mean, that I have to count that as essentially the same thing as what Takahigashino did, so the rest of the run was a little bit better. We're very tight, though. These scores are very, very close, and with Max D, the last truck out, definitely a chance for him to get a huge score and win. We'll find out, though. Max D, here we go. Final freestyler. We've had eight trucks. Been a very, very consistent freestyle competition, but not a great one. I want to see a great one right here from Neil Elliott. Neil Elliott was another one of those guys who was always out there at the international events. Getting nice air to start off his run. Neil knows what he needs to do. I mean, essentially, if you land the backflip, you're going to get it done. But I, I wouldn't even try. I would do the same thing that Morgan Kane did. Just hit the side of the backflip ramp. Maybe get lucky and land a backflip. Because you're not going to be able to land one using the actual ramp there. You've also got to fill the rest of your run with good moves, big jumps, maybe a save with the mud a little bit harder. There's not a lot of room for you to be able to do a crazy move like that. So we'll see if Neil can make it work. Fans in Tokyo want to see something big here today, and Neil get nice air. Again, a rear engine truck, a little different from what Neil Elliott's used to. He's usually driving a front engine. So the weight balance, the weight transfer is very, very different in this truck than what he's used to running in the United States. But because he did so many international events, he drove this chassis so many times. So for him, really no stranger to it. He didn't feel uncomfortable. He was very used to it. And you can see here, looking comfortable in this run. He's going to need to seal the deal, though. You're not going to be able to win without getting a somewhat wow moment in there. As Morgan Kane had one, so did Takahigashino. He cross-threads that ramp, too, and he jumps right over the backflip. Well, that's a kind of a wow moment I'm talking about. Got to finish strong, though. Just throwing the truck around. He doesn't have much time to make something else happen. His time is up. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Do you think Neil Elliott deserves to win this thing, or do you think... Morgan Kane does, because I, for one, am torn, and honestly, oh, I hate to do this, but I'm going to give him a tie. I don't ever do this. I'm going to tie the two of Gravedigger and Max D together, and with that, let me know in the comments who you think deserve to win freestyle, because you guys can be the ones to determine it today. I want to hear what you think. You crown the freestyle winner. Was it Gravedigger, or was it Max D? Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, comment what you thought of the video. Let me know some other things you want to see on the channel. I will see you all in the next one.